生の先輩たちを目標に頑張りますってどうでしょう<笑> Hello and welcome. Today we are in the Tier 10 German aircraft carrier, the Manfred von Richthofen. We're playing a standard battle on the map hotspot, and I start out by flying straight towards the enemy. I dump my first set of torpedo bombers so that they can fly back to my CV since I'm only going to get one strike in. I'm gonna drop a fighter plane over here on this mountain so that I can, they can spot the enemies as I fly, you know, do my thing with, with my... Uh, actual strike aircraft. The fighters, on the other hand, will simply be there to spot stuff that heads in their direction. Also, because it's on the mountain, it'll go in and out of concealment, meaning that if the enemy accidentally doesn't realize that they're there, she might run her planes into it, which would be quite useful. This time, though, it appears the enemy CV does avoid them. However, we're gonna go do the strike on this Dmitry Donskoy. Hopefully, we'll have some success. Then pull back and follow up with rocket planes, as we have found ourselves a cruiser. And the AP rocket planes on the Manfred von Richthofen are very, very effective against the broadside of a cruiser, although it's possible for them to angle. I just hope they don't. The enemy Richthofen starts out by dropping our Benson, who just keeps sailing in a straight line and avoids them. Those are really difficult things to avoid. I drop a f another fighter plane over here. Maybe not necessary, considering the CV is dropping a DD. The MVR is not very good against destroyers. However, well, it might still end up being useful. Anyway, I'm gonna try to fly around. I expect the uh, Donskoys will not want me to get her broadside, so she is going to maneuver against it. Therefore, I will need to fly a fairly long circle around the ship to be able to get her broadside. Although it's even still possible that she might just turn in here. Oh yeah, I don't think I don't know if this is gonna work. Maybe. Let's try. Come on. Excellent! I think we got it. Yep, 15k damage. So we're gonna do another one. Because remember, we're still using Gunther Lutjens, who has the special ability that active that makes your planes regenerate faster. But it activates once you get uh, 30 rocket torpedo or bomb hits combined and we're only at 13 so far so we need another 17 and the rocket planes are the best at racking up rocket hits or any of those hits also our benson seems pretty dead i still drop a fighter just in case maybe it'll help our Donskoy. and we're gonna try to go and uh, do another one on this guy although i think yeah this time the angle of attack is quite bad Especially now that she's already turning and there's no, just no map to run to. I don't know if this is gonna be good enough. Although maybe. She stopped turning for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why she stopped turning. Anyway, I'm gonna try to turn around and do another strike to finish her off. Come on. I only need like two planes, I think. Nope. I'm, yeah, this isn't gonna work. Yep. See, this is the reason why you dumped the planes early on. So I'm gonna go try again, or maybe on the other side of the map. But this is why you dump the planes, because you're not gonna get the second attack in anyway, so there's no point in risking them in case you accidentally get hit by a flak bubble or something like that. Remember, CVs are actually kinda unforgiving. If you do make even small mistakes, um, okay, maybe not small mistakes, but if you don't pay attention or make a mistake that's tiny, you can basically end up your end your strike and your strike does take a lot of time so it's going to be a significant problem it's not like other ship classes where you know you keep firing all the time you have a much more limited amount of strikes available in a cv you know what i don't know what to drop i'm just gonna go drop this yamato because i already am out here with the rocket planes and i'm not gonna find myself a better target i think I'm just gonna rack up my hits and go for some other planes. Such as dive bombers. Or torpedo bombers, but dive bombers here are better. Because there's a Montana in the middle of the map that doesn't have any support. And she should be fairly easy to strike because there shouldn't be too much anti-air around. Now, unfortunately, there's nothing of my... There is no... There are no allied ships between me and the enemy Montana, 
which means that I can't drop a fighter plane to help any of my allies. So unfortunately, it's going to be annoying. The other annoying thing is that the Montana has a float fighter, which means that I'm going to lose a lot of planes here. This is why, again, you should also dump your planes. I tried to time my heal to maybe not get screwed over, but I think I still did. But yeah, th this is the kind of stuff why you need to... Why you really should dump your planes instead of just flying in with them. Anyway, apparently there's something in our cap zone already, and there's absolutely nothing anywhere close. I think I am actually the closest trip to them. Then the second next closest trip is a hipper that's over 10 kilometers away from the edge of the cap zone. So we're talking 15 kilometers from the actual destroyer in the cap. I just wanted to fly over it, drop a fighter over there, because... I don't know, maybe the destroyer... Well, actually we need to trigger the smoke now so that... Once the capping has gone on for longer, we can go and actually disrupt her. Because right now, obviously, you can't strike into a smoke screen. Therefore, uh, nothing can be done at the moment. It does mean, though, that I can more or less safely move my crew or carrier around there. And as this is going on, I can at least strike the Montana. I am going to sa sail closer. I do have secondaries on the CV, which do have some effectiveness. You can see 9.1 kilometer range. So if we can simply spot the destroyer here, we might be able to do something. I also launched torpedo bombers because I think on the MBR the torpedo bombers are actually the best weapons against destroyers. The torps are pretty fast and obviously rocket or AP rockets will simply overpan and AP dive bombers will do like nothing. Even if you can even hit them with them. Anyway, the Z-46 is actually sailing in my direction, so the worrying part here is the torpedoes. We need to be able to avoid the torpedoes from the Z-46, because she is absolutely going to rush me. That's why I start... I try to turn away a little bit. I also want my, want my secondaries to be... to come into effect. Dropping on a destroyer with torpedo bombers is actually quite hard though, unless the destroyer just isn't paying any attention. But in this case, I'm mostly relying on my uh, on my secondaries to do the work. Okay, there are the torpedoes, but we have successfully avoided them. So the Z-46 doesn't really pose much of a threat to me anymore. Like, her only threat is actually spotting me. The secondaries will be able to easily finish her off. Ooh, I actually hit the torpedo, but that wasn't even enough to actually sink her. I mean, I did lose half of my HP here, right? But we managed to defend our cap zone, and right now we're actually in a pretty bad position. We've sunk two ships, they've sunk five of ours. We've lost all three of our destroyers already. They've only lost one destroyer that I sank with my secondaries, okay? They've lost only that one destroyer. Anyway, I'm gonna go try to do another strike on the Montana. She unfortunately has another float fighter, which means that this is going to be annoying. Maybe I should go after the Conqueror instead. I don't know. This is a hard decision to make. I drop a fighter on my uh, friendly Slava because, well, the CV might strike her again, especially since she's busy with the Montana. Also, I found another destroyer. Hello, Montana. Please catch these citadels. Please, 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 please. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna go turn around and go do a follow-up. Hopefully we can finish off the Montana. Although I think our Slava is pretty dead, considering a destroyer was advancing on her position and there are a few other ships that are firing at her. Okay. I think this is gonna be a pretty good drop, too. All well, depends on the RNG, though. Okay, only one citadel. Wow, one of them actually missed. Okay, whatever. Hopefully my team will be able to finish her off. I'm gonna go do a follow-up on... Well, not follow-up, I suppose. I need to reposition my CV. And I think... Maybe use the rocket planes. Maybe we can finish the Donskoy off. Because remember, or the Talon. Either or, right? Like, both are cruisers and both are ships that we kind of do wish to get out of the game. 
We're still far behind though. We've lost six ships. They've only lost four. And this is with the ship we just sank. Oh, there's the Talon. And she's kind of low. Excellent. We should easily be able to finish her off here. Or if we can't, somebody else will. With a nice salvo across the map. Say a Shikishima. No, Shikishima was unsuccessful, but we had a lot more success with that. Tends to be a bit easier time when, you know, you're only like two kilometers from the ship at the most. Anyway, let's go find the Donskoy. Maybe we can finish her off. Remember, because I did Citadel damage to her, right? Which means that she does not have that much HP to heal back. You can't heal Citadel damage nearly as easily as other types of damage. We're still behind though. I mean, we're behind in points because they had a destroyer sit in our cap, and, well, we're behind in ships too. But we found the Donskoy though, so maybe this isn't gonna go as poorly as it has seemed so far. Okay, we found the Yukikaze. Hopefully our Shikishima takes note of her current position, because I can't actually deal with the Yukikaze. Ooh, we finished the Donskoy off. Now we're even in ships. This is good. This is really good. Now we simply need our cruisers to get into positions to be able to finish the destroyers off, and this should be pretty damn good for us. Okay, I'm gonna make a confession. Note to this point in the game right now, okay? I think I should have gone for the Ohio here. Like, just head straight south for the Ohio. But I get uh, distracted by there being a destroyer in our cap zone. Again! But I get distracted over here. I should have gone for the Ohio right now because the Ohio is alone. And she's fighting our Montana right now. Whereas this Conqueror is fighting a Thundra that was in the damn corner. Who cares? The uh, Ohio would have been a better choice, I think, to go for. But I figure the Conqueror is low enough that maybe the going after the Conqueror is actually a good idea here. Although the angle of the Conqueror, especially as she's turning, is kind of bad. Conqueror is very maneuverable, which makes her kind of hard to strike. If she actually tries to avoid you, of course. If she doesn't, obviously, then there's no problem. Come on, goodbye, Conqueror! 21k? Nope. Wasn't enough. She still has 891 HP. Hopefully, the Hipper will simply be able to finish her off. One HE salvo and she's gone. I'm gonna pick rockets to follow up, because we absolutely need to decap this Erland at some point, especially now that our Shikishima is still advancing, and she's gonna be in trouble because, well, there's two destroyers in front of her. Can't believe I have to deal with another destroyer in my rocket plane with my CV that can't actually deal with destroyers. Okay, oh god, the Conqueror got the super heal off. Well done, Hipper, well done. Wouldn't have wouldn't it have been nice if you could have just, you know, deleted her before? Nope. Apparently not. But now we have this these destroyers to deal with, so I can't actually go and do something for the Conqueror. Or, I mean, to the Conqueror. I know rocket planes aren't very effective against these destroyers, but we need to do something. Because if the Shikashima goes down, I don't think I can even do anything to them. As right now, she at least got shot at by the secondaries. And hey, we got the one CV, or destroyer, sorry. And Yukikaze seems to have left. And now let's go finish the Conqueror off. I'm gonna try to be slightly more conservative with my ship um, sailing path. But all in all, I do need to advance because we kind of need to start giving our allies some air cover. Now, the unfortunate side effect of fighting the Z-46 earlier is that I am a lot lower in HP than I should be. If I was full HP, I would have no problem just sailing next to the Shikishima. Also, I don't want to go drop the Conqueror. She only has 2000 HP. The drop might really not be worth it, especially when the Shikishima wants me to spot the Yukikaze. Well, I did spot the Yukikaze, but... The Conqueror has disappeared again! Oh my, are you... <sighs> what is that Hipper doing? 
why does she keep sailing in a way where she... And now the Conqueror has healed again. Why? I mean, Pepper's like the one ship that could have ended this Conqueror. Two times now, actually. But for some reason, she keeps sailing in a way where she is unable to do so. And I'm not really sure what, what for. Like, what, what does she gain from this? Okay, anyway, at least the Conqueror is gone now. It doesn't matter if I had dropped now or, like, 30 seconds earlier, or a minute earlier, I guess. Not sure what to really launch here. Because there's obviously a destroyer ahead. But we also need to deal with the Yamato and the Ohio. Remember the Ohio? And I mentioned that I should have dropped her? Well, if I had dropped her, the Ohio would probably be dead now. But unfortunately, now she is next to the, en to the enemy CV, and I don't think I can actually go strike her. So I'm not really sure what to do. I'm gonna try to find the Yu Yukikaze, or if I can't find her easily, the Ohio. But obviously I already found her, because I'm spotted, right? And my plane detection is outside of the uh, Yamato's detection. And since my carrier is now spotted as well, obviously Yukikaze is somewhere right there. And there she is. So, another destroyer that I have to fight some for some reason. They've only had three, and somehow I have to fight all three. Also, the Hipper has again moved in a position where she can't assist properly. What the hell is going on with that guy? Also, dealing with an actual destroyer that's actually only fighting me is really hard. Especially one that has F3 torpedoes. Like, I'm pretty sure I'm just dead here. Because the torps are gonna... It's very hard to dodge these. And they deal a huge amount of damage. So I, I'm just going to have to bet on luck here, I suppose. There they are, and I have 4,000 HP. Yep, I'm dead. My only hope here now is to be able to uh, actually sink the Yukikaze in return, but I don't think it's going to make a difference in winning the game then. Because they still have the Ohio and the enemy CV. So I don't think this is going to work. Yep, there goes my ship. Still have th two more strikes. Should be able to deal with the Yukikaza, I hope. Oh, she actually ran to, into the torpedo. Both of them even. Wow. I think she's actually gonna die to that. Like, that strike alone, I don't think I need to do this follow-up. Yeah, she's gone. Goodbye. <laughs> so, we got all three of the enemy DDs. With a Richthofen. But, game's over. We, we have no chance of winning now. Because they still have a CV and the battleship, right? But then again... Okay, let's imagine I had struck the Ohio. Maybe it wouldn't have made a difference. Because if they didn't have an Ohio right now... We'd still be in the same spot, right? It would still be a Hipper against uh, an aircraft carrier. A Hipper with like 8k HP. It wouldn't work. So yeah, sadly, me having to fight the destroyers kind of screwed us. Well, maybe not screwed us, but it was, it made me unable to do the things I might have needed to do later on here in the match. But then again, even if we were even in ships left, right, it still wouldn't matter. Because they had destroyers sail into our cap, which meant that they blocked it for a bit. So if both sides lose the same amount of ships, the enemy's team would still be ahead in points. So we would have needed to sink more of them, and considering it comes down to, well, one ship, we would have had to sink all of them. So, I guess, maybe, yeah. I don't think this was a winnable game. Somebody else would have probably had to do something differently. Or maybe I could have just played more against the destroyers early on, but anyway, this is over. Although, I'm not even sure if they can sink this hipper. You know, I might complain about what the Hipper did in terms of being helpful with the guns, but there's no denying that she's very good at surviving. Yeah, those planes won't make it. Hipper survives! See, that means his repair cost is lower, right? 
I mean, that's why people, uh, that's why people do play passively, isn't it? Except it hasn't been true for many years now. But hey, we still had an excellent game. I mean, we sank six ships, we got the Kraken, we got the close quarters expert. We did 20 Citadel hits. This didn't actually put us at number one. The, the I think it's the Montana that rammed, right? Yeah, the, it is. By the way, it's just me and the Shikishima, me, the Montana and the Shikishima that got any ship kills on our team. We were the only ones. Oh well, this could have gone a lot better, but hey, sadly, look at our bottom three. They are our, our destroyers. All three of the bottom ships are our destroyers. Whereas the enemy destroyers did slightly better. Especially that Yukikaze. Well done. And here's the ships I sank. I sank the Öland, the Z-46, and the Yukikaze. All three destroyers. Okay, I didn't all that, do all that much damage to the Öland, but I took most of the HP of the Z-46 and the Yukikaze alone. I feel like I fulfilled my battleship role adequately with my 1.5 million potential damage. So let's take a look at the commander skills and upgrades and it turns out I was mistaken. I did not actually have Gunther Lutyens as my captain, which means that all of that stuff at the start was kind of pointless with getting enough rocket hits because I didn't have the captain. So I took I, the skills I go for are air supremacy, uh, improved engines, survivability expert, site stabilization, aircraft armor, Concealment Expert, then Last Gasp, and Improved Engine Boost. Well, actually, I take Improved Engine Boost before Last Gasp. Just the other way around. Upgrades-wise, I use also fairly standard, so obviously Plane Speed, because this allows you to cross the map quicker, get in more strikes, etc. Then uh, Flight Control Modification 1, so you have planes that regenerate faster, and the fact that you have more, car more planes on the deck. Then secondary range, as you saw, it was quite useful this game. This puts us at 9.1 kilometer uh, secondary range. And the second slot, aircraft engine modification, because engine boost is incredibly useful. And then air groups modification 1 to increase the returning speed of the aircraft. So that, you know, I can go strike again more, more often. So yeah, I guess I didn't have Gunther. Which is kind of annoying, but hey. You can't always have the special captains around, so I guess it doesn't make that big of a difference. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, and I hope I'll see you guys next time.